Hello, my name is Rachel and I love playing with makeup. So today I thought I would do another one of those chatty get ready with me's. You guys didn't seem to hate the last one even though it was ridiculously long. <laughs> so I thought why not do it again? <laughs> so I guess we'll just we'll start with the makeup and then I will chat with you about some things. <laughs> Now, of course, I've already exfoliated and moisturized, and I'm going to start with this Illamasqua primer. Next, of course, is the Wet n Wild eyeshadow primer. And we're going to be trying this Venus 3 palette that I received in a boxy charm. I've never tried lime crime eyeshadows before so this is gonna be my first time this is what the palette looks like some pretty colors there and of course I'm using my dual color skull and crossbone goth brushes <laughs> and some various face brushes and I'm gonna set my eyeshadow primer with this color right here called dreamy I feel like lately I've been going in for too dark of colors for my base, but whatever, we're going with it. I have to tape up my eyes, forgot about that. So the other day, <laughs> Facebook reminded me that four years ago, Dolls Kill was selling, sold my scale mail tops. And I was thinking how unfortunate it is that they ruined their reputation like they did because I can't brag about it. <laughs> Oh my goodness. They had, one of their buyers had found me on my Etsy store and had sent me a email or a message through Etsy asking me if I would be interested in creating um, a couple of styles of top for them for their festival season. And when I first got the message, I thought it was some sort of scam. I, I didn't, didn't really believe it, but I researched the person who uh, the name on on the message and found out uh, you know went to their LinkedIn and found out they they did work for Dolls Kill so I replied back and uh, I wound up that first year making four styles of top for them and 20 well one style of headdress uh, the four styles of top three of them I did 10 each one of them I did eight and then I did 20 of the headdresses and <laughs> it was just a really awesome experience. Um, it came at the exact right time. I just happened to be unemployed at that moment. So I had plenty of time and needed some money. So uh, that was a really awesome experience. And then the following year, I was working again at that point, so I didn't have as much time. So I just made two styles of top for them, 10 each. And, uh, you know, I personally just, just had that really good experience with them, but I, I do understand why they've gotten into all the hot water they've gotten into. Obviously, there, there's been a lot of uh, questionable racism issues and stealing from smaller artists. I guess I was uh, one of the lucky smaller artists because I do know they also reach out to a lot of smaller artists. I'm an example of that and purchase from them. Uh, but I, I understand that there's also an issue with them stealing from smaller artists. And I think it's a bigger issue with Person, a person of color, smaller artist. Um, I think maybe I just lucked out in that. <laughs> but what I do, you know, the, the scale mail is really hard for them to just steal that design because they need scale mailers <laughs> to do it. So, but yeah, so I was just thinking like how unfortunate that I, I, I can't really use that as bragging rights because people are like, ooh, dolls kill. And as, as far as like stealing designs go, I, I have really conflicting feelings on that in that when um, one of these like Chinese companies steals from a huge company like uh, say um, Killstar, I actually don't feel bad about that. I'll, I'll buy a Killstar ripoff because you know by the time that these companies come up with their, their Killstar ripoffs, Killstar has already, you know, canceled that line went on to a new line and they're not really losing any money uh, <laughs> and plus i think i have sort of a robin hood complex where i'm like yes steal from the rich <laughs> but when it's a small independent artist 
that of course is when you know it's upsetting because you know the small independent artists that's that's the way they make their living they don't have a huge corporation and tons of money behind them they're just trying to pay their rent and bills and get ahead a little bit so it's definitely a different different situation <sighs> okay so next i'm going to go in uh, the inside of my eye with this beam And that is a really pretty color, maybe a little bit light to be putting over that dreamy color I put down as my base. Uh, but for the outside of the eye, I'm going to go in with this Paradise, this dark purple. So pretty colors, decent amount of fallout. <laughs> I don't know whether, honestly with Fallout, I don't know whether it's the shadows or me because of the way that I heavily apply them. It could be more me than, than the shadows themselves. Unfortunately, I haven't done my base yet, so <laughs> we're fine there. And then under my brow bone, I'm going to put this Rapture color. Oh, and with the, <laughs> the Killstar tops, funny story. Like the second year, uh, they had they were down to two of the tops left, and those two tops went on to like complete clearance, and they the price was actually two dollars lower than what they paid me for them. So I bought those two tops back <laughs> and had them mailed to my friends in New Orleans. <laughs> so I still made two dollars off of each of those tops. <laughs> so I just thought that was funny. I haven't ordered from from them like even back when when they had a decent reputation I, I never really ordered from them a lot because as you guys know I'm cheap but I do really like their willow uh, willow I do really like their widow line um so I am uh, you know I do occasionally <laughs> see some of the widow stuff and be like darn it but again that that whole small artist thing that's that's something that I do have problems with so <sighs> They were just stealing uh, Killstar <laughs> ideas. <laughs> but of course, they're not going to, like a big company like that isn't going to steal from another big company that can actually legally fight them. <laughs> but next, I'm going to do the outlining thing and I'm going to go in with this beam and do the outlining thing. And I know I've mentioned before, like when I've done some of my lip service stuff, that w uh, lip service, you should used to actually have a line called Widow, and I'm wondering if, because Widow seems to be Dolls Kill's line, wondering if Dolls Kill bought that particular line off of lip service. If you know, tell me down in the comments below. Also, please tell me your feelings on the whole, you know, art theft thing. Do you also disagree when it is a larger company? Like, are you also mad when, when uh, these cheap Asian companies steal from Killstar or are you like me where it only upsets you when it's a smaller artist or do you think it's all just a slippery slope and it should all be condemned because I can see that argument too and also when they steal from like Punk Rave because like the dress I'm wearing right now is Punk Rave but Punk Rave is also a Chinese owned brand so I, I think that's kind of funny that the cheap Chinese knockoffs are also of a Chinese owned brand <laughs> and Killstar uh, as far as I can tell their clothes are all made in China as well the few labels I checked they're also all made in China so they're, they're getting stole, stolen from possibly the same factories that make it for them that might be how that one top I got with the really nice velvet, how they got the real velvet with that Cthulhu burnout. Because if it's the same factory making the, the ripoff, they would have access to that fabric. That's fairly even. Let me clean up my <laughs> fallout 
and then we'll start on the face. So I cleaned up all that fallout and next I'm going to do my face and today I'm, I'm just powdering. I'm not going to do uh, like the, the tinted oil that I really like or even a foundation. I'm just going to use this face powder. Some days I feel like just, just powdering. This is a tinted face powder so it's not just like a translucent powder. So there is a little bit of coverage. You can also see all your dry spots once you add powder to them. But with the lights on the camera, the powder tends to, I think, look pretty nice. And next I'm going to go in with this Chocolate Soleil Contour. This thing has lasted me forever. Still smells like chocolate. <laughs> Back to the, the subject of art theft. I recently found out that a lot of those molds that I bought off of Amazon for my resin art are actually stolen designs from small independent artists. I uh, had posted one of my little unmolding shorts on Instagram and a Instagram friend uh, asked me, you know, this is great, are those molds from, and then and listed the name, I think it's Raven Cantano? Um, and I, I had no idea what they were talking about. And I was like, I just found these on Amazon. But then I was like, I should look up that name. So I looked up the name and I found uh, their Instagram and they made a post about how, you know, <laughs> their designs were, were being stolen and how they've unfortunately started fighting it a little bit too late. And they've been trying to get them removed from like Alibaba and AliExpress and all those Chinese wholesalers. But tens of thousands of these molds have already been, you know, sold and, uh, he did mention uh, on that post that, you know, he doesn't blame people who bought the molds not knowing uh, because it's, it's insidious. They're all over Amazon. They're even all over Etsy. There are tons of Etsy sellers that apparently buy these things wholesale and then resell them on Etsy. But I did go to Raven's Etsy store and I did buy a couple of his original molds. My goal is to eventually replace the stolen molds I have with the original molds from the original artists. I'm also following a... Uh, Etsy page called I think it's like mold theft designs or something like that um, I'll, I'll put it in the description box below if you're interested in this sort of thing but they uh, they're um, it's a newer page but they're tracking these stolen molds where they'll post the original artists and then post the stolen uh, mold and um, so I'm, I'm through that I'm going to see if any of the other molds I have like I figure they'll find them eventually if they are and then I'll try and hunt down the the original artist and, and try to replace them with the original artist but something to keep in mind with that is I mean the actual molds from the actual artists have real art prices they they do not have Amazon prices so it's going to take me a while to afford to replace the molds I do have uh, by like I said I started with just two small ones a lot of the other ones I have like the crow skulls both of those crow skull molds are his designs the demon cats are his designs you know, and they're anywhere from 60 to to $100 per mold, which is completely fair for real artwork because he individually sculpts each of these things, hand sculpts them out of clay and then creates his molds from there. So it's a lot of work and effort and it's just, he's just a one person operation. And, and they, he is in the UK, so I'm still waiting for those two molds I did order because it's going to take a while because it's shipping from the UK. But his shipping was really reasonable from the UK. I think it was only like $5. So he must absorb some of the shipping costs as well because I looked at another UK mold artist and their shipping was what I, what I expect from the UK, like $20. And again, it's, it's one of those things where, like he said on his post, it's so insidious and out there. It, there's no way for people to know that these are stolen designs his designs, you know, unless other people who happen to be aware, like, like I was informed. And I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm still going to be using the molds, which I'm, which is why I want to replace them with, eventually replace them with real molds, because I want to make sure that the original artist gets compensated for me using those designs. And, and that's the best way I can think to compensate him for me using those stolen designs, even though, like he said, uh, on his post, he, he doesn't blame because we didn't know and it's it's just so insidious it's just hard to avoid it, I did have like a day of horrible guilt over that but again it's like I didn't know but I'm gonna try like I said I'm gonna try I'm gonna try and do the right thing here it's just gonna take me a while 
because I just can't afford that much money at one time. So I'm thinking like once a month I can buy another one. But that is something to keep in mind um, if you're also playing with resin and if you care about this sort of thing, because I know not everyone does. And that's fine. We're all, we all have our own, you know, limits of tolerance on that. Oh, I'm using, <laughs> as I, the top's broken. I'm using this Butter Blush from Physician's Formula that I love. It's uh, really pale. I don't even know if you can see it on my skin, but it just smells so good. <laughs> But yeah, definitely tell me down in the comments below what you think of that whole situation. And have you run into something like that before where you unknowingly purchase something that turned out to be, you know, stolen from a smaller designer? Okay, I'm going to go under the eye and I'm going to go back in with that paradise to go under the eye. And then back into beam for the inner corner. I'm actually going to go into this silvery soot color for my waterline. Got this palette for my last boxy charm. It's a highlight palette. And we're going to go in with this marbled one here in the corner. You know, I haven't even been paying attention whether or not you can see me when I look in the mirror. So <laughs> if there are chunks missing of me doing makeup, <laughs> It's because I didn't want to show you just the top of my head. <laughs> I really need to learn to be more aware of that. I think that's a pretty highlight. And let's see, I gotta finish up the eyes. I need to do my eyebrows. I guess I'll do the eyebrows next. And we're gonna go in with this KVD dark purple pomade today. I think this might actually be starting to dry out. I think I said this last time because I still haven't done it. I really need to trim and uh, clean up my brows a little bit. They're getting a little out of control. <laughs> you know, they say your brows should be <laughs> Sisters, not identical twins. Well, mine are usually distant cousins. <laughs> and that's sad because I'm not even like drawing them on. I'm just filling them in. <laughs> Lashes are next. And I have this damn girl by Too Faced. And if you saw my other video where I use this, it's definitely not my favorite mascara because I'm someone who needs length. Uh, but this, this is you know, good for volume. But since I'm going to be putting on some false lashes, it's fine. Although I do find this overly fluffy brush to be a bit annoying to use. <laughs> so Virginia finally opened up its vaccinations to all age groups. So I did get mine scheduled for May 4th. <laughs> That's a, a funny story about that. Like, so I sign up for May 4th at 8 a.m. And, you know, my, my appointment gets approved. A couple days later, I get a text message. Your appointment has been canceled because this clinic has changed its hours or something like that. So I log back in to the CDC site where you go to schedule your appointment. <laughs> and, you know, that's the the clinic where I'm going. It's actually at the, the, the raceway here in Richmond. It, it's the only one available to me. So I click back on it to see what dates are available. May 4th is still available. I click on May 4th. <laughs> the earliest appointment they have available is 8, 10 a.m. So I signed up for the 8, 10 a.m. appointment. It's like, really, you canceled me for 10 minutes? <laughs> oh my goodness. Hopefully I don't get another one of those things get pushed back more. But because of the night shift thing, I want it as early in the morning as possible so I can go get it done and then just come home, take some Tylenol PM and just, you know, sleep off, sleep it off. Although the first shot, I don't know if the first shot really has much in the way of weird side effects. I think it's the second shot that gives people the flu-like symptoms. But okay, so some false lashes.
all the times I use these magnetic lashes, I'm still terrible at applying the <laughs> eyeliner, the liquid eyeliner. Uh, but yeah, this is my favorite false lashes from uh, Amazon. I need to get a new set soon. I've, like most of these pairs I've worn so much, they're beginning to lose their effectiveness. You can only wear them so many times. And the magnet that seems to go first is that one on the inner corner. That's always the one that seems to give me the most problems. <laughs> so how are vaccinations going in, in your area? Like, tell me in the comments below. Are, are people getting vaccinated? Are things beginning to open up and things getting back to normal? Or do you think it's going to be a long while before things get back to normal, even with the vaccinations? And of course, I smeared eyeliner all over the lid and it won't wipe away easily, so... Fortunately, my eyes are so hooded, you won't see that anyway. <laughs> but there we go. Lashes attached. I do know, though, that I really like the wearing of a face mask thing. I might just continue to do that even after the plague. Like, like they, they, I mean, they've been doing that in Asian countries for years, but I haven't had so much as even a cold <laughs> since all this began. <laughs> and today I'm going to wear this hard candy. It's their Glitterazzi. It's the black one in Celestial Lipto. Oh, black diamonds. That's, that's the color. Black diamonds. Um, and I'm not going to do the, the sparkly top coat. I'm just going to do the lipstick itself. So that's it. I think I'm ready. Thank you for hanging out with me while I got ready to take some photos for Instagram and <laughs> also to film another video. Uh, <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed my little chatty get ready with me. I feel like I've been filming forever so hopefully I can cut this down to a somewhat reasonable length. <laughs> but let me know uh, again uh, what, if you guys are still liking this format or it, um, if you just prefer I do the quick trying for the first time video sort of things because technically this was trying lime crime for the first time not that you could tell with all the other stuff going on <laughs> oh I guess I should tell you my thoughts on that lime crime palette I like it I mean I don't think it's anything special or amazing and I definitely wouldn't pay full lime crime prices for it but as you guys know I'm cheap um but yeah, I'm definitely happy to have it from, uh, you know, a subscription box and I will definitely use it again. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy the video, please feel free to give it a thumbs down and tell me all about it in the comments below. <laughs> I need that content, guys. <laughs> and please subscribe to the channel. And I hope everyone is just staying happy, healthy, and safe in this incredibly crazy world we are living in. And I will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.